Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. With proper medication and monitoring, diabetes can be effectively managed. But sometimes, no matter what you do, the unexpected happens. A person can have a severe low blood sugar reaction. That's when you need to act quickly and give a medication called glucagon. By doing so, you could save a life. This short video will walk you through the whole process. We'll tell you what glucagon is, when and how to administer it, and what to do afterward. It's a simple process that takes effect within minutes. Spending a few moments now can help you act effectively to treat a severe low blood glucose reaction. When a person with diabetes has a low blood glucose episode, they need treatment immediately. There are two levels of low blood sugar reactions, mild and severe. Mild symptoms of low blood sugar can include headache, shakiness, tremors, increased heart rate, and dilated pupils. These can be treated with oral glucose-containing solutions. But during a severe low blood glucose reaction, a person cannot drink. They may be unconscious, be unable to swallow, or experience seizures. These symptoms must be treated immediately with glucagon. Glucagon is a hormone that is given as an injection. It is a natural hormone that causes stored sugars to be released into the bloodstream. It works within minutes. Patients need glucagon if they are unable to swallow, unable to follow verbal directions, are confused, resist taking oral glucose-containing solutions, become extremely lethargic or unresponsive, or have seizures or convulsions. If the person is experiencing any or all of these symptoms, here's what to do. First, if you can, check the blood glucose level. If the person is having a seizure or is in a coma, you will skip this step and administer glucagon immediately. Mix and give glucagon as an injection exactly as you give insulin shots, either in the thigh or in the arm. It doesn't matter if the glucagon is given in the subcutaneous tissue or the muscle. Call 911 if the person has not responded to the glucagon after about five minutes. Contact the person's health care team for further instructions, including when to give more insulin. Following these steps can save a life, so it's important to have easy and quick access to your glucagon emergency kit and to know how to use it. Now, let's take a close look at your glucagon emergency kit. There are two different types of glucagon kits. This kit includes a bottle of powder and liquid that is in a hypodermic needle. When you need to administer glucagon, here's what to do. Remove the cap from the bottle of powder. Remove the cover from the needle. Put the needle of liquid into the bottle and push all the liquid into the powder. Mix gently until the powder becomes liquid. It doesn't matter if bubbles form. Draw up the amount of glucagon needed and give the injection. This kit includes a bottle of powder and a bottle of liquid. You need a separate hypodermic needle for this kit. You need to draw up the entire amount of diluting fluid in a syringe, inject that diluting fluid into the bottle of glucagon, mix and draw the fluid back into the syringe. You may use an insulin syringe or a larger one given to you by the pharmacy. The correct dose of glucagon depends on the age and body weight of the person you are giving it to. An infant to a three-year-old should receive one quarter milligram. A 4-year-old to 11-year-old should receive half a milligram, and 12 years and older should receive 1 milligram. Remember, a severe low blood glucose episode must be treated with glucagon. Here again are the symptoms that signal a severe episode. Patients need glucagon if they are unable to swallow, unable to follow verbal directions, are confused. Resist taking oral glucose-containing solutions. Become extremely lethargic or unresponsive. Or have seizures or convulsions. This video has shown you that a low blood glucose episode can be effectively treated, but it is best to prevent them from happening in the first place. The key is prevention. 
This means following the patient's individualized diabetes regimen, checking the blood glucose level four to six times a day, taking the right amount of insulin to balance the person's food intake and their physical activity, and being aware of the signs and symptoms of low blood glucose and knowing how to treat them. It's also important to know how to reach the members of the person's medical team so you can be sure adjustments are made when diabetes control is not optimal. The best way to do this is to call the person's healthcare team and ask them. Don't forget, they are your partners in the care of the person with diabetes. I'm LeVar Burton. Thanks for watching.